Hey everybody, this is Spoonie, and today I want to go over the basics of electricity and wiring in Rust. If you're new to Rust or just new to playing with electricity in the game, electricity can add a whole new depth of gameplay, and by the end of this video, you should be able to set up some basic systems. So to start any electrical project, you're going to need a wire tool. This is fairly cheap to make at only two high quality metal, and it has no durability, so you won't need to make another one unless you lose this one. It can be placed in a tool cupboard for easy access, and also to keep it from getting lost amongst the rest of your loot. Wires don't cost anything to place, so you won't need to worry about spending resources when placing them. To start a connection, you'll begin by looking at any component and left-clicking on one of the ports that appear while holding the wire tool. Once the port turns yellow, you can left-click to begin your wired connection. You should see a green line appear that will show where the wire is being run. If you left-click again, you can connect this wire to any walls, floors, or ceilings to manage where the wire is being run. This doesn't serve a purpose other than wire management and to keep your base from looking like a spider web. Even if it does, you can walk directly through wires and wires can also be run through walls without any issues. Wires do have a set distance they can travel, which is displayed in the center of the screen while you're running a connection. The smaller number below the larger one shows how many times you can connect it to a wall, floor, or other object, but I've honestly never reached that limit. If you have a lot of wires in your base and you're having trouble seeing exactly where one wire is headed, you can left click on the connection and it will highlight only that wire. If you need to remove the wire, you can right click it and then change where it's connected to. If you need to remove where it's connected to a wall, you can also right click again or hold down the right mouse button and clear the connection entirely. Now that we know how to wire things up, let's take a look at power storage and generation. There are three ways to generate power in Rust, solar panels, generators, and wind turbines. Wind turbines are the largest producers and the most consistent source of electricity in the game. The drawback to these is that they are large and must be placed high up in an unobstructed way, ideally on the roof or higher. This can make your base visible from further away and potentially makes you more of a target. Wind turbines don't produce a consistent amount of electricity, but they do produce typically between 60 and 150 power at any given time. Solar panels produce up to 20 power in ideal conditions, so make sure they do face the sun. I like to aim mine towards the center of the map. During storms, these will generate less power, and at night, they won't generate any at all. And the final method is generators, which consume low-grade fuel to function and are ideal for caves, raid bases, or any temporary power needs. All three of these methods can be connected directly to components to power them, but you'll ideally want to store up some of this electricity in the event that your power needs are outpacing your production. So for that, we have small, medium, and large batteries. Each battery has an input and an output port. The different battery sizes each also have a different maximum output, which can be seen along with other information about the batteries by holding the wire tool and looking directly at the battery. To connect your power source to your battery, you just need to hold the wire tool, left click the output on the power source, and then connect it to the input on your battery. If you have multiple power sources, you're going to need to use a root combiner. This is red in color and combines two power sources into a single output. Connect the power sources to the bottom of the root combiner, then use the top connection to connect directly to the battery. Or, if you have more than two power sources, you can connect the top of one root combiner to the bottom of another. Root combiners can also be used to connect two different batteries to increase your maximum output. For two large batteries, this would increase the maximum output from 100 to 200. Something else to keep in mind is that batteries only store 20% of the incoming power they receive. So, for example, on a large battery, in order to maintain its maximum output of 100 without depleting any of its charge, you'll need an input of at least 125. Now that we know how to produce power and how to store it, let's take a look at how to use it. To begin, we're going to hook up one of the most common components you'll end up using, which is an electrical branch. An electrical branch allows you to split up a power line in a specified way. If we have 15 power coming off of this small battery, we can separate that amount by pressing use on the branch, setting the amount we want to branch off, and then using the top left connection to use that specified amount. The rest of the power remaining will be sent to the power out connection on the top right. So let's connect an electric furnace using this electrical branch. To find out how much power a given component uses, you can look in the crafting menu under the information panel on the right side. We can see that the electric furnace uses three power. So we're gonna need to branch off three power to our electric furnace. To do this, we're gonna press the use key while looking at the branch. Set the branch off value to three, and then connect the branch to the furnace using the top left connection. Now, only three power is on this top left connection. We can use the rest of the power we've input to the branch using the top right. Since we put in an original 15 and branched off three, we should have 11 left over because the branch consumes one. 
To see how much power is on any given connection, you can hover over any input or output while holding the wire tool. This will display the amount of power that's connected on that line. Something you should also know about branches is that as long as power is run into the branch, whatever amount is branched off will be consumed. So it doesn't matter if we turn our electric furnace on or off, the three power we have branched off will always be consumed as long as this electrical branch is powered. The same is not true for the power out connection on the top right. Whatever power is left over there will not be consumed. But what if you had multiple small furnaces, or some other components that all had similar electrical needs? You wouldn't need to set up a branch for each and every one of them, instead you could use a splitter, which is one of the other main components you'll be using a lot. Splitters act a lot like branches in that they do split up an electrical connection, but unlike branches, splitters will evenly split a connection across its three outputs. You don't necessarily have to use all three, if you only use two, it will split the amount of power coming in in half. Like most small components, splitters do consume one power, so if you need three power to come out of each of the three outputs, make sure you connect 10 power to the input. Finally, we'll take a look at switches and lights. Switches have an input on the bottom and an output on the top. There's also two connections on the right side, but those are a little bit more advanced and can be difficult to work with, so we'll cover those in a different video. Switches function exactly like a light switch. They allow you to turn a connection on or off. When placing switches, it's important to remember that these can be used by anyone who can reach them. So make sure they're in a secure area unless it's for something you don't really care about, like a light switch. For something more secure, smart switches function exactly the same way as a regular switch, except they can only be used by those who are authorized on the tool cupboard, making them a much more secure choice if you have the tech trash to craft them. To demonstrate these, we're just gonna quickly connect them to some lights. Some components that you're likely to have several of, like lights, have a pass-through which allows power to be continued on after making a power-in connection. This allows you to connect multiple components without the need for additional branches or splitters. And those are the basics of wiring and electricity. Hopefully this allows you to get started creating some basic systems of your own, like setting up lights, electric furnaces, or even a small farm. I'll be adding some more advanced guides to explore the more complex components as well as some setups and examples for how they can be used. I'll also be adding some guides for some systems I often include in my bases. Let me know down in the comments what systems you're hoping to build, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.